I've had a lot of people ask me about Panhard bars lately. I've done another video about Panhard bars, but since I got so many questions, I got a guy from Australia running a modified with a Panhard bar in the front. I'm going to do another video about Panhard bars, so let's roll the intro and we'll talk about Panhard bars today. I've spent the last 30 plus years working on race cars, building race cars, and racing cars. And I'm here to help you better understand racing technology. I think about J-bars in the back more like a pole vaulter than having a roll center because with the spring angles and then you get your kinematic versus elastic weight transfer involved there, it's hard to really figure out with a J-bar where a roll center would be. So what I always thought about is the, the J-bar being like I said a pole vaulter. If you think about your center of gravity in your car, on a late model, it's about oil pump height. On a modified, think of it as about camshaft height. Put a rope on that center of gravity and start pulling on your car. The distance below that center of gravity that your mount is on your J-bar will depict how far that car will roll until everything evens out. Everything wants to even out. If you're pulling on a rope, it doesn't want to pull diagonally. What it basically does is the action on the frame side is gonna wanna level out. If it's above, it'll try to level out. If it's below, it'll try to level out. So that's where you're getting your pull vaulting action to it. What I like to recommend, I've always recommended the late model guys, if you don't have a chassis guy giving you heights and stuff like that, try setting your panard bar about two to two and a half inches below your oil pump height when you're at ride height. I've always thought that that would give you enough lift to initiate the elastic weight transfer in the back and then you tune and stuff like that to go from here or there. Use your chassis manufacturer's recommendations if you have a chassis manufacturer. But if you're doing your own thing, try the two to two and a half inches below your oil pump once. That always seemed to be where we like to run them. I always talk about J-bars also in the traction area because I think they add as much traction as they do supplying a lateral load to your car and pick angle and everything jamming down on your car and giving you side bite. But now think about your pinion rotating. Now this is a decoupled thing. I know the sport mods, I think, run a three-link thing, and their panhard bar is different. I'm talking about a birdcage rear end on an A mod or a late model. You're controlling the center movement of the car separately than the bars moving forward. It's called decoupling. But anyways, what I always thought is because the J-bar is mounted ahead of the pinion and it's on an angle like that, when your pinion wraps, it's actually pushing up on the left rear and it's starting to give you like traction in the rear. So think about it not only in the sense of car rolling, but now you're talking about a traction device. The further ahead or the further out down below the pinion or the further it is up on the frame and it jams it, you're going to get different traction status. I always thought the most traction you'd get is the lower it is in the car from the center line. So when you lower your J-bar in the rear, you're actually adding traction because the lever distance is going to get bigger on that from the center line of the rear end 
and it's going to give you more traction. Now let's talk about a panner bar that is mounted to the frame on the right and the rear end on the left side. Rayburns used to run this. They used to call it the, the purple bar would be over there, would go over the top of the pinion a little bit, and it'd be mounted on the left side axle tube on what Rayburn called a warthog. Now think about pulling again on your center of gravity with that rope. Your axle height is at one position, and if your frame height is above that, they're going to want to even out. So having your right side mount higher than your axle mount, it's going to even out and squash that right rear spring and give you traction on that right rear and make your car tighter. If it's lower than your frame height, it's going to want to even out. It's going to want to pick up that right rear a little bit and it's going to want to deter roll onto that right rear spring so what i always thought is as the car rolls and as that center of gravity starts to pull you always wanted to have that frame side up a little bit from your axle tube mount so it always wants to start to pull into that right rear spring and give you side bite. Now on the front it happens too. The same thing is when you get a, a lateral load transfer, if it is mounted on the right and on the axle on the left, the difference there is going to pull into that right front spring and actually start to give you traction or wedge or diagonal or however you measure it the action of that weight transfer is going to pull into that corner. Now, if your frame height is below your axle height, it's going to want to pick that corner up probably a little bit. And I'm not saying it's going to take all the roll out of the front because you still will have some elastic roll into that right front. But the action on that panard bar is actually going to want to keep that right front up instead of let it roll or pull into it very easily. So that's one thing to think about when you're thinking about panard bars. All these panard bar scenarios can be figured out pretty easily if you use that center of gravity, pull on it with a rope, where are your two points? The two points are always going to want to even out. That just pulling out a rope, rope wants to get straight, wants to move laterally. So it's always going to want to even out. So wherever those two points are in relationship to each other, when you pull on that center of gravity, think about that rope trying to always even out and then what's, where it's going to pull into that spring to make you tighter. So let's go over to the drawing board and we'll do some diagrams and we'll try to explain exactly what I'm talking about while pulling on the rope and how it's pulling up or down on the car. This is what's typically going on with your J-bar. Like I said, I always used a rough estimate two to two and a half inches lower than your center of gravity height. And what's gonna happen is, is you pull on this rope. This is your rope I always talk about. You pull on that rope, this end is going to want to at least get level in there. So it's going to want to help roll that car then onto the right rear and pick it up to a point. Now there's a lot of things going on there with, the, with your weight transfer and kinematic versus elastic. But this is kind of what's going on in your rear end and you kind of think about this and you'll be able to figure a lot of things out. Now think about this, once these points level out, we're still going to get a little bit of roll, but what the panner bar is providing at this point is a major jacking effect pulling up on the car on the left rear. Like I said, there's a lot of factors and you'll still get roll but it'll mainly go towards pulling the car up on the left 
career. I'll think about this point for a while. I don't know if you'll ever eliminate roll onto the right rear, but if you're getting a lot of right rear squash, if your pan once your pannard bar gets higher than your center of gravity, when you pull on that rope, it's actually gonna wanna raise the whole car. I think your car will still always roll onto the right rear a little bit, but you're actually raising the whole center of the car up when you get the panard bar height higher than the center of gravity. There's a canceling effect there. Now let's think of the old Rayburn or the straight panard bar up over the rear end. This is where it's attached to the rear end, say on the left side. This is attached to the frame on the right side. Here's our center of gravity. And here's our rope again. Pull that rope laterally, and what's actually going to happen is these points are going to want to straighten out. So it's going to want to actually pull down into the right rear and squash the right rear once those things start straightening out. I got a question from an East Coast type of modified driver from Australia that has this set up kind of in the front. And all you have to think about is your weight transfer onto your right, where the panard bar is mounted on your left side, where it's mounted on your right side, and think about how that whole thing will add or detract roll in the front. Like I, like I said, I don't think you'll ever eliminate total roll, but when your kinematics go to play a part in total roll, it'll be diminished if this once these points level out. Then it'll be more of a elastic roll that's going on there. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel and ring the bell for notifications. Notifications aren't spammy things like you're going to be getting blasted by email. It's basically when you log into YouTube to watch videos, it'll just say that I have a new video up. So subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, and I'll see you in the next video.